My name is Haley Schust and I'm a learning experience designer at Salesforce. Today I'm back with another ATD toolbox tip. This particular tip will be helpful for projects that require multiple rounds of feedback. I'm talking about the projects that might have many designers, some copy editors, and of course stakeholders and subject matter experts. One might say there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen for these type of projects. There's a lot of back and forth and let me provide an example of what I mean. First, designers will build an outline and have stakeholders review it. Then the designers will start to write and they'll use feedback from subject matter experts to validate their content, sometimes multiple times. Later, editors will look at this content and make suggestions for improvements to punctuation, grammar, and general sentence structure. And finally, the content will be organized in a storyboard format to illustrate the general structure and flow of the e-learning course. This ultimately leads to additional rounds of review from stakeholders and editors and SMEs. And this can all be a lot to manage. And aside from the actual amount of feedback, the actual management of the reviewers can be daunting, as there are instances where you might not want two groups reviewing at the same time. For example, you'd want your subject matter expert to review content before your copy editor. This ensures that your content is as close to final as possible by the time it gets in the hands of an editor who will want to see the final general structure of the content itself. Now take a moment and think about how you've managed rounds of feedback and review for your projects. Do you send documents back and forth via email? Do you use collaborative documents like Quip or Google? Do you have reviewers leave comments inside of the document or do they make edits using suggestion mode? Maybe you like to use spreadsheets to capture line by line edits. And do you share the same document to all your reviewers or do you spin off different versions for your editors, your stakeholders and your subject matter experts? There's an assortment of different methods and tools you can use to share documents and gather feedback. But my favorite tool for this use case is Airtable. Airtable is an online platform for creating relational databases without any scripting. And let me pause there. I know you might be thinking, Haley, why would I use a relational database to manage feedback on an e-learning design and development project? I promise it will make sense once I show you. Let me just lay the foundation. Anyway, Airtable has a clean, simple user interface that feels like a friendlier version of a spreadsheet. Now, there are a ton of features and integrations that I won't speak about in this tip, but Airtable offers useful guides and webinars that will get you really excited about this tool. Okay, so let's jump to the fun part and actually take a look at the tool. I've used Airtable to set up an example storyboard for an e-learning course about account planning. I plan to build this course using Articulate Rise, so I've included some information about actual Rise content. Note the headings of the columns at the top. There's a column for the section of the course, the order of appearance of each block, the type of block found in RISE, including a visual, and the content found within that block, including any attachments such as video or audio files or images that I might need to contextualize what's going on. Now we're going to say that I need stakeholders to review this storyboard and approve it before I go into development. So I'm going to set up this Airtable so that it's easy for them to review and leave their feedback. What I'm going to first is structure the Airtable so that it's easy for the reviewer to understand. First thing is I'll group the rows so that they're chunked by each section of the course and in the proper order in which they'll be displayed. That way it kind of mirrors the general structure of the e-learning course. I'll do that by selecting group and then section. Cool, now each of the rows are grouped by sections. Notice that I did add numbers to the beginning of each section to ensure that they'll display in the correct order. I would suggest that you do the same. All right, now let's make sure that each rise block is going to appear in the correct order. I can do that by selecting the sort function. And then from the drop down, I'll choose block order and make sure it's set up as ascending. Now each of the blocks are in the correct order, so it mirrors the way that you'd experience it in the course. Our array table is now structured in a manner that's a lot easier to understand than just a spreadsheet. This friendly user interface is one of the primary reasons why I prefer Airtable over spreadsheets for review. It's much easier on the eyes to see sections of content and to get the look and the feel of the experience rather than just looking at rows and rows of information. All right, so we're getting ready to send this off to a stakeholder so that they can sign off on it and so that I can get started with development.
The first thing I want to do is add a column for their comments. So I'll choose the plus sign and then long text. This ensures they have plenty of room to add as many comments as they want. I'll name this column stakeholder comments. If there are multiple stakeholders, I might make several columns and title them each with the name of the person. Another alternative is to duplicate the air table and create multiple tabs for each person going to review. But for this example, let's just say there's one reviewer, so I only have to send it to them. And I think we can all agree that sometimes feedback leads to a little bit of discussion, a bit of back and forth. So I'm going to add another column for me to respond to each stakeholder's comments. I will title this designer response. And for the sake of granularity and just good project management, I'm going to add in one more column to indicate the status of an edit or discussion. To do this, I'm going to choose single select and add in the following options. Upcoming, in progress, blocked, and completed. I can also change the color of the section or the option if I want, and then I'll choose Create Field. We can see that the table's pretty filled out at this point. And let's take a second to consider the stakeholders' experience in this review. Do they need to see all these columns? Is there anything that's distracting? What will they need to look at the most? Well, all they'll really want to see is the visual of the block, the contents, and any related attachments. So let's go ahead and hide the sections that they don't need to look at. To do that, I'll select both columns, right click, and then choose hide two fields. Good, now they're not distracting to us or the stakeholders. I think it's fair to say that this is just about ready to be sent. So I'll use the share button to generate a link that I can send to my stakeholders. Do note that Airtable will give you the option to choose the entire base or just a view. A base includes all the possible tables and tabs found in the, in the air table, while a view is limited to a certain tab or number of rows. For the sake of simplicity, I prefer to share the whole base, but there are many use cases in which you might want to limit it. When I share an air table with stakeholders, they are added as collaborators. If you choose, you can assign a collaborator to a particular row. This might be useful if you need a subject matter expert to review just one section and nothing else. To do that, add the collaborator column. You can now select collaborators from a drop-down list and assign them out to a specific row for review. All right, so as I close this out here, I need to emphasize that I've only scratched the surface of Airtable and its many uses, but hopefully this short demonstration inspired you with some ideas. Indeed, Airtable is a pay tool. You're only allotted a certain number of bases and collaborators before you're asked to pay, but I truly think it's a worthwhile investment, especially when you're working with a variety of projects with a long list of reviewers. In many ways, an Airtable can act as your single source of truth during your design and development stages and even beyond that. And you'll always have the option to edit sharing permissions so that you can collaborate with confidence. Thank you for your time, and I hope to see you again soon.